Who placed the secrets in the Great Pyramid? Well, of the wide spectrum of groups that study pyramids, and especially the Great Pyramid, almost all of them talk at some point about the secrets and the mysteries that are part of the pyramid. And so it seems like everybody can't be wrong. There are secrets there. In this picture, I've got my camera taking a picture of an Alpha and Omega that's written on the sarcophagus in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. A mystery. Who placed that Alpha and Omega there? Who placed the secrets in the Great Pyramid? Okay, here's a map of Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. And you can see the White House is near the center there. And so if you place the angle of the Great Pyramid, the angles of the Great Pyramid, uh, centered on the White House, it's amazing the extent to which it seems like this was part of the planning. We know this was a planned city. You can study the story, the supposed story about how it was planned. But let's just look at some of these. So just following a street that's right there, you know, going uh, northwest from the White House and just following another street right there. And then there you're following a street right there, following a street right there that are they're just right on the map. This is the way the city was laid out. And then let's connect those two points there. And let's connect those two points. And of course, you're using a street to connect those those points. OK, then here is a a street that doesn't have a corresponding street on the other side. So far, we've been pretty symmetrical. But here's a street that just goes off to this side, right to the US Capitol. And then take a horizontal, it goes to the Washington Monument. And then uh, we take this descent down to the island there. And uh, you've got basically the subterranean chamber, OK? So here's the street right there coming away from the Washington Monument. And then here is an angle that goes to a uh, major intersection there. OK. Then we have, if you follow this channel, what we call the Hemayunu template from the air shafts that come out of the King's Chamber, because I'm implying that's what's, what's happening here. The, the plane of the Great Pyramid, the slice, the horizontal slice of the Great Pyramid is 200 royal cubits square. And it uh, has many uh, implications throughout the pyramid. We call that the Hemiunu template. Well, there's a street right across those points that would be the Hemiunu template. And then there's a, you could place a horizontal right through where that X is, where the cross is made. And that comes very nearly to where one of da Vinci's horizontals is in the Great Pyramid, indicating a hidden chamber. Interesting. Okay, so. Here I've taken away the map, and now I've got the lines that I drew there over the Great Pyramid. And you can see well, that while there's not a perfect correspondence, there does seem to be this relationship between the, the, the streets, the way they're created, and the air passages that come out of the King and the Queen's Chamber. Okay, um, okay. so uh, that right there is a void. Like those red lines, they come to nothing. Because we removed the map, that's where the White House was. Okay, so... Here you see we put uh, the map of da Vinci, basically the Vitruvian man, inside the Great Pyramid over this. And we see, again, there's a great cavity. There's a void in the center there. Okay. So I wanted to see if perhaps the famous void from the muon scans might be right where that void is in where these lines are drawn from the Washington map over the Great Pyramid. So when I was in the office of the former Minister of Antiquities for the nation of Egypt, uh, uh, Minister uh, El Damati, uh, we were talking about that void. He's the one that commissioned the Scan Pyramids team to come in and do this study. And so he wanted to find a picture of something he wanted to show me in his computer, and he couldn't find it. So he showed me it on his phone. He had it on his phone, and that's he's holding it up right there. You can see it. And I asked him specifically if where the void is shown in that picture was accurate because all the other voids you see when they're pictured on, on pictures on the Internet, they don't show basically what he's showing there. But he assured me that that's where the void was. So I want to take that void then. So here's a and of course, he's holding the phone at an angle. So it's not a perfect reflection. But if you put it down there, it's very close. That void chamber comes very close to being the place that all these lines converge in sort of that void space there which is basically the place of the White House, okay? So there's the White House, uh, a top view superimposed right there, okay? So, you know, you can see that's right at the center there, all right? So there's a the traditional void, you see. Now, you can see how that void, if it's uh, where the void is in, in the uh, 
Great Pyramid doesn't really come to where that, that void center is uh, that, that's created by the red lines from the streets from Washington, D.C. Okay. But again, when you place, you know, Elder Damati's phone that he told me this was a, a true likeness of it, it does come very close. That uh, void area, this chamber that we haven't yet found, but we know it's there because of modern science, it seems to correspond with that. Okay, so we know that George Washington was a Mason, that Masons are a secret organization that are especially focused on Solomon's Temple and the Great Pyramid. And like Rosicrucians and John Dee and Edward de Vere and Knights Templar and Illuminati, there, there's a secret organizations that seem to know a lot about the Great Pyramid and other things. Okay, so a couple questions here. All right. Uh, secret organizations have secrets, right? I guess that's not a question, that's a statement. We, we're pretty sure we, we know these secret organizations have secrets, okay? So how are these secrets transmitted from generation to generation? Because it seems like there's a lot of really intensive truth that has come down through the ages through these organizations, okay? And how far back do they go? I mean, you can, you can find the date when the Illuminati were founded, when the Masons were founded, supposedly the Ros Rosicrucians, but the, the things that they've encoded go back before them. So there must have been some transmitting organization that got it to the Masons or the Rosicrucians or John Dee or the Illuminati or whoever. And so where is that? Where is that original source of revelation? And how was it, you know, passed down through the years? Who initiated them? Who started this set of esoteric truths? And why are they kept secret? You know, we can maybe understand how, you know, in, in uh, you know, Victorian England or uh, in, in a, uh, the Catholic history of the, the Middle Ages where the church was very aggressive in persecuting, you know, heresy that people would keep. The, but in today's world where, you know, kind of the sky's the limit on a lot, a lot of beliefs, what's wrong with just telling the world what, what the secrets are? Why are they kept secret? Is there danger in seeking to know them or understand them? Am I going to get in trouble for asking these questions and making this video today? It certainly wasn't on my, my uh, list of things to do, but it's just kind of what came across the, the wire here. So here's a, a shot I took of Google Earth. And it's interesting that uh, you can see the White House South Lawn there. That j Just do this on Google Earth yourself. You know, it's 230 meters across, which is 440 royal cubits. And the same thing when you go this way. Okay, so interesting, those are the dimensions of the ground plan of the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid fits right over the White House. So is that, is that by chance? You know, is there something going on here? Okay, so I got to thinking, you know, since there seems to be an obvious connection here, let's lay over Giza, you know, over Washington, D.C. here. We've already done it with the Great Pyramid. Let's just include the Western Tomb Field, for instance, or the Satellite Pyramids. There does seem to be a connection with the Satellite Pyramids, but then let's just look at two, the two biggest tombs in the Western Field. Okay, the first one is right there, just following the fact that the Great Pyramid has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the White House lawn area. Okay, so we just superimpose Giza over Washington, D.C. And here's the other one, and this is the tomb of Hemiunu, the architect, the one who encoded secrets in the Great Pyramid. Okay, so what are those in Washington, D.C.? Well, this one is the World Bank. And this one, Hemiunu's tomb, is the Council on Foreign Relations. Hmm. Now, I know that I've read about a lot of conspiracies associated with the Council on Foreign Relations. And so I did a quick Google search this morning, and of course, there's a ton of them. So just to pick one, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Illuminati in the United States. According to the Illuminati, the Council on Foreign Relations is the American branch of the conspiracy to take over the world and create a world government. Okay, so I am not promoting this or saying I believe it. I'm simply a pyramid researcher. There was a time when I taught political science at the college level, and I would get into political things, but I've switched the focus of my life to studying pyramids and devoting my life to that, and really the secrets and the esoteric truths behind that. And so even though this is the deep state, take over the world kind of thing, I'm not going there, okay? So, you know, I'm just the director of the not-for-profit think tank, the American Institute for Pyramid Research, and this is what came across my desk today. I think there's a few interesting connections here. What do you think?